you kind of answered my question because I was looking at uh, the 2022 class and I counted 14 guys on the defensive side alone that were ranked in the top 15 of their positions. <laughs> that's that's a ridiculous flood of talent. So you you mentioned a lot of guys that you think Jalen Walker, um, Kristen Miller, and some other guys that that could make a pretty immediate impact. Maybe not start, but have a significant role, uh, meaningful reps against good teams. Yeah, they're especially the defensive line guys and the secondary guys. Those are the two positions that need playmakers. They need guys that are willing to step up and and put in that work. And um, because you've had. I don't want to you know, drop names at the defensive line because I hate doing that because everybody's working hard and stuff. But that position is open because you have guys that haven't lived up to their potential. And um, so you have – Mikael Williams is another one that's kind of already been making a name for himself. And Kirby had to kind of shut it down and be like, look, just because he's out there, that doesn't mean anything. He's learning. I'm having to teach him this and this and this. And so um, – that's going to be a position to watch because Bear Alexander, while he is out due to injury, um, his size and just his sheer force and physical ability is going to be something to watch over the summer and into fall camp because he could just explode onto it. And Miller is another one that could just kind of use his raw talent to push his way up, up the depth chart because they're just physically that gifted. And Trace Scott can kind of mold them as they're, Figuring it out because you have Jalen Carter and everybody else ahead of them. But then that kind of second string is wide open, in my opinion. And Miller and Alexander are going to be two guys that are going to push themselves up the depth chart just because they want it bad enough. They kind of have that gritty attitude of, I don't care that I'm a freshman. Like, I'm just as big as you, but you have more experience in terms of knowing the playbook. So if I work that hard in that area, then I can beat you physically because I'm already there. Uh, Sean Washington is another one that's big bodied. He's going to be kind of a project in my opinion. I think Trey Scott brought him in to kind of see what he can do with him in the interior on the defensive line. Uh, But yeah, those are, you know, a couple of guys that I've been watching and just kind of eyeing. Um, But then Jaheim Singletary is another cornerback that could, you know, and it's just Georgia Singletary, Georgia secondary is kind of a, a free-for-all. You have your veteran leaders that decided to came back, come back, but then you have a bunch of spots that just can be taken right away from a, a young corner that could beat out a sophomore who maybe isn't working as hard as he was or he is now, but he just isn't physically as gifted as Everett or Singletary. Um, but, yeah, those are two areas that I'm really, really – excited for with the mid years. And um, I know we're not talking offense, but that's another side of the ball too, that has already seen the mid years kind of taking, not taking over, but making a name for themselves. And I, and I enjoy that because you get 19 in January and that's enormous. Uh, You know, that's kind of unheard of. I remember like 13 back when Nick Chubb's freshman years or, you know, right around that time and thinking, Oh my God, like how are you going to use 13 right away but you've had players join the team back in december when they were working on michigan working on getting ready for alabama already putting in reps and work and that's where kirby has changed his recruiting i know i mentioned it before and i don't want to be too repetitive but they're not just going for five stars who look great on film they want kids that understand it's going to take hard work and dedication and i'm not just going to throw nil money at you or anything else like you're gonna have to earn it and that's kind of the definition of this 2022 class is determined and ready to kind of make a name for themselves and, you know, keep the eliteness going because that, that 2021 group left a legacy. And it's like, where are you going to do with it now? Are you going to be another LSU or are you going to be someone like Bama? And I know that's a big comparison, but like you either continue to reload and you continue to contend or you end up like, an LSU or even maybe a Clemson who has seen depletion in some areas and aren't nearly as competitive as they were when they had, you know, that massive defensive front that they had the last few years or whatever, just giving a few examples, but yeah, determined 2022 that's synonyms at this point. 